like to roll the dice. By chance they came, by devil's game, and gosh, they paid the price. Paid the price. Hello, folks. This is Chips. And this is going to be my second episode of My Two Gill, the series where I give you a little piece of my mind. And today, today I want to discuss Cuphead. Yes, yes, folks, I will admit it. I am indeed human, and I am as susceptible to hype as the next guy. And even though I would like to do my run number 751 of Dark Souls 3, I think I'm gonna play a different game today. Now, to speak with the truth, I didn't really get interested in this game after all the hype around it. As a matter of fact, one of the main reasons why I wanted to play this game is because both my wife and myself are huge jazz fans. And when we found out about this game having that jazzy 1930s animation feel with just gorgeous aesthetics to match, we were immediately sold on the premise. So when the title was officially released on Steam, it was not difficult to convince her to go ahead and drop 20 bucks on a beautiful game we could both enjoy together. Once I booted the game up the first time, besides having a stupidly big grin on my face when the title music started playing, I quickly noticed one of the factors that made me the most happy with this game. Couch Co-op. Couch Co-op in a new game! Now, for all of you youngsters who grew up playing Call of Duty on Xbox Live, this might sound a bit silly. But when I was growing up... Oh my you god, you freaking old lord, I still remember that. Oh, shut up! I'm not that old. Anyways, when I was growing up, one could just take a new game cartridge, yeah, I know, cartridge, out of the box, pop it in your gaming console of choice, and instantly start playing with your best friend. However, nowadays the gaming community seems to have an ever-increasing online presence, and local co-op is increasingly becoming more of a commodity, especially since developers try so hard to tailor their new experiences to that online market. Even having some mainly single-player games have the balls to threaten us with the always online backhand slap. However, when you load up Cuphead, the only way to add a second player is by pressing a button on the second controller. I'm not gonna lie, folks, this feature instantly made me smile. And I reminisced of the arcade games of old, where a second player could easily slide their quarter into the machine, press a button, and all of a sudden it was not just you kicking the Foot Clan's ass. After going through a couple of levels, both my wife and myself noticed something quite interesting. Cuphead is pretty hard. This was not a problem for me, as I have apparently been made into a freaking masochist by the Souls franchise. Heck, <laughs> I even think I told this particular floral abomination, spank me harder daddy, a time or two before I beat it. But my wife, on the other hand, she did not enjoy the experience nearly as much and was almost immediately frustrated and annoyed at the repeated festival of deaths that took place while fighting the colorful bosses. We're still playing through the game as of the moment of publication of this video, but while I can pop in a game like Cuphead and play for hours, she has to play it in short bursts. She has repeatedly told me that she enjoys more casualized experiences like Skyrim or Dragon Age. Always in the easiest difficulty, of course. And I, on the other hand, of course enjoy being tortured and maimed by a game's difficulty. This situation got my mind strolling down a path and pondering how the difficulty of a game is a very important aspect of its design. And when it is naturally baked right into its mechanics, I think it has the potential to make a game quite memorable. It was then, during this personally philosophical moment, when I was hit by this wondrous gem of game journalism. In his October the 2nd, 2017 article for Rock Paper Shotgun, John Walker gives us a masterclass in how to appear smug and entitled, while at the same time shifting blame towards all of those hardcore gamers 
for making this community and the games found within it into such a despicably toxic environment. John's main point in this article is that, since Ubisoft announced their Discovery Tour mode for the upcoming Assassin's Creed Origins, a mode where one can explore the immersive and detailed Egypt recreation presented in-game, then to have a boss skip mode added to the game should not be much of a problem. Now, I will admit that he did briefly mention in passing that the inclusion of this Discovery Tour mode might work more as a pro-education PR move by the AAA giant. However, John quickly backtracks and assumes that this inclusion has been brought forth to appease casual audiences, or maybe even as an effort to become an all-inclusive title. So, with that misunderstanding at its core, John Walker proceeds to berate and deride all these so-called hardcore gamers that are against the inclusion of such modes in these games. Now, I need to pause for a second to clarify my position here. First of all, I have to come out of the closet and admit it. I am one of those hardcore gamers that Walker mentions in his article. And I also admit that I prefer punishingly difficult games, where it is personal skill and pattern recognition that determines one's progression through the game. However, if I am to provide my own honest thoughts regarding the gaming industry, I think that having games that include easy modes and accessibility shortcuts is not a bad thing in and of itself. <gasps> yes, yes, I know. By uttering these words, I have become a traitor to gaming culture and are to be relegated to the kiddie table with the rest of the casual gamers. But please give me a chance to explain myself here before you give me a good tongue lashing. I think that the first thing that people on both sides of this debate need to understand is that the inclusion of these kind of casualized modes and how good of an idea they are all depends on what the developer is trying to achieve and communicate with its video game. As a result of this, if difficulty is an intricate part of the game for a specific reason, doesn't matter if it's ambience, stress, or even challenge or nostalgia, the inclusion of a skip buzz button will be a detriment to the vision of the developer, and including it will just see the game's original purpose, as intended by the developer, become just a sacrificial lamb in the altar of inclusivity. There is of course a flip side to the situation. If a game is heavily based on story, exposition, and the gameplay mechanics are really used in a matter where skill is not necessarily the bulwark of content or progression, then adding an easy mode will not deter the experience whatsoever. Having clarified this point, let's go back to the original point of the article. In my opinion, pushing on developers to add a feature such as the boss skip button indiscriminately is one of the most patently ridiculous ideas I have ever heard. This idea immediately maims the developer's independence and forces them to conform to a specific standard, even though this might be contrary to what the developer otherwise intended. Not only that, but some games, specifically older titles, use difficulty as a means to extend not only the original experience, but to give a game replayability as well. So, if a developer intends to provide a retro experience, as is the case with Shovel Knight or The Binding of Isaac, then adding one of these fast-forward mechanics goes contrary to what the developer intends to present and evoke in the gamer. There are additional elements that also come into play when considering this argument. Several of these so-called hard games, like Ninja Gaiden or the infamous Dark Souls, utilize the idea of increasingly punishing bosses and level difficulty to teach players to become more acquainted with the mechanics of the game, effectively raising the stakes on later levels or bosses. This makes later fights feel more stressful and meaningful. This is exacerbated even further if we consider things like corpse runs, which are runs where players attempt to skip the entirety of a level just to be able to fight the boss with the highest amount of healing items. These games are based upon the premise that the levels are teaching the player mechanics that they will need to master in order to progress through the game, and the levels often culminate on a high-stress, all-or-nothing badass exam 
in the form of an epic boss fight. If you eliminate the boss mechanic from those games by including a skip boss button, you have essentially taken all of the stakes and tension out of the game, and therefore that feeling of accomplishment that accompanies it. Now, while I do understand that not all gamers enjoy or even seek these feeling of exhilaration that comes with the challenge, I think that it is the developer's prerogative to present their game in this manner, if they so desire, or strip it out of their game in order to appeal to a bigger, more casualized market. This is made even more apparent with a game like Cuphead, in which defeating challenging bosses by memorizing their patterns is the game in and of itself. Now explain to me, how is adding a bus skip button improving on the experience this game has to offer, which is almost entirely made out of challenging bosses? I think that the main issue with this argument is that it hinges on the premise that games must be either all-inclusive or exclude all but the most hardcore gamers, and that any attempt to bridge this gap is an erosion of the gaming culture. Instead, we might start by recognizing that games are varied in nature, and that they all attempt to realize very different visions through their presentations. And as such, it is okay to have a walking simulator like What Remains of Edith Finch, where the developer is more interested in conveying a specific story and narrative throughout the game than presenting challenge. However, it is also fine to have a game like Cuphead, a game that goes very light on the story, but which presents us a very challenging, yet satisfying experience, which would be ultimately decimated if one were to include this skip buzz button. I feel like demanding that these fast-forward features be included in a challenging video game is akin to demanding that a hardcore level of gameplay must be added to a game like Gone Home. Ultimately, if you ask me, it is all up to the vision of the developer and if this game is not for you, you do not need to play it. In short, let the developers decide the kind of experience they want to present and stop bitching about them not specifically catering to your whims, be it with making it easy or not hard enough. So that's it folks, this is our second My Two Gil episode. So let me know what you think about this. Am I wrong with what I'm saying? Also, let me know if you like this format by giving it a thumbs up. And if you like my videos, consider subscribing to the channel. I put out content every week, or at least I try. These were my two Gil, and this is Cheps, and I will see you soon.